Hello everyone, this is Steve with Aptera Owners Club. In this video, we're going to talk to one of the engineers about the software side of solar, which is something I knew nothing about. So this interview is a little painful to listen to because I sound like a complete idiot because I don't know anything about this. So I'm asking him a bunch of questions, which I'm sure are fairly ridiculous, uh, but he does a great job of answering them. And uh, I learned a lot by having this interview of things that they are thinking about that I had never even considered as issues. But obviously, uh, they are thinking about things and testing things that um, are new problems that they have by putting solar on a vehicle that are not intuitive, but uh, make sense when you think about it. So hopefully, this is not as painful for you guys to listen to and you get something out of it. Okay. Hi, I'm Steve. Hi, uh, Steve. I heard you work on the solar. Uh, I do work on solar, yeah. It's just the charging aspect. Oh, okay. So not quite the panels, but the power conversion. Oh, okay. All right. So you don't you do not do the encapsulation or anything like that? No, I'm not on the packaging. Right? Okay. So what, what what is it that you do then? So I do firmware and integration for the uh, charging side of things. So integrating with the other different systems in the car, informatically, uh, analytically, to actually like carry out a solar charge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. I don't I don't understand what that means. <laughs> Software. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you, you don't do the hardware part of it. No. Okay. What what kind of software problems are there with it that you need to solve? It's um, it's definitely the most interesting part of my job because uh -huh. there's not a lot of like production solar vehicles being made, so it's kind of a new problem. Um, okay. And it's questions like when do we want to charge? When is it safe to charge? Uh, these are all things that software controls. Okay. Um, and then you know, of course, failure states, failure modes, those kinds of things. There's a lot of uh, like any automotive uh, company that has to deal with this. Uh, in 2022, uh -huh. uh, most cars will have like lots of different ECUs inside of them. Okay. And they all have to communicate uh, what they're doing and make sure nothing is doing something unsafe based on another one's state. Okay. So at Aptera, we have a whole new ECU, which is like solar charging, and that has to communicate uh, with all the other systems in the car okay. in this totally new way that uh, other cars haven't had to deal with. Okay. So that's a lot of my job as well. Huh. Yeah. What are, are there some unexpected issues that you run into or? Um, Really just like the new questions of like, when do we try to charge? Uh, how often is that? Uh, what happens if we try and charge and there's not quite a lot of solar, uh, you know, like... Is there a problem if you try to charge and there's not enough solar? Well, we want to make the car as efficient as possible. So okay. we want to be charging whenever we can, uh, but also not wasting power trying to charge. Okay, because uh, so it takes power to charge? Uh, it takes power to do anything electrically in a car. So okay. like, uh, there's lots of little computers that have to be on for any anything in a car, including like solar charging. So part of making a vehicle efficient is turning off of those systems whenever you can. Okay. Um, so there's an uh, intricate little dance you have to do between huh. different ECUs in a car. Okay. Uh, so that's part of my job. Um, so I have I have home solar on my oh, house, yeah. and I remember someone telling me that like if part of a panel is like shaded. It like screws up the whole system or something yes. like that. Yeah. Like, why is that? So, solar panels, uh, and, and really this is towards the edge of my knowledge, I've had to do a lot of learning on this, uh -huh. but they are, uh, this one is a current source. Uh, there's actually like an electrical model for them I won't get into. Uh -huh. uh, but because of that, there is actually like a, uh, a more efficient way to charge them depending on how they're shaded. And there's a control algorithm that goes into it. Okay. So for all the different parts of solar in this vehicle, we have to run that control algorithm to find uh, how the most efficient way to use that solar panel is. Okay. Um, and that's what the little things you buy for your home do internally. But we have to do it in a production car. Uh -huh. That And one thing we see that those little chargers don't see so much in homes is rapidly changing conditions. Yeah. So if you're driving on the highway, and this, right. is, this is another challenge we run into, uh, you might be driving under trees, you might be driving through a city with buildings shading, right. you might park for like a half an hour at a rest stop if you're on a road trip yeah. and uh, half the car is shaded. And, right. uh, Every single time one of those conditions adjusts, uh -huh. you have to change that, that PowerPoint that you're tracking to. 
Okay. So uh, the best way to control algorithms come in. And, and there's questions like, do you change it rapidly under rapidly changing conditions? Um, do you only change it when the, the condition has, uh, or when the shade has persisted over a certain amount of time? Right. Um, and really, like these are questions that haven't been answered. Right. Nobody's really brought a car like this to, right. to production. Because a mobile solar time. array is not kind of a exactly, new thing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so this is this is some of the challenges we run into. And, okay. Uh, really, uh, one way we're going to solve all this is just a lot of testing. Okay. Uh, so. Um, when you, so I don't, you, you're going to have, forgive yeah, my ignorance yeah. here. When you have, when you have the solar power coming in, it comes in as DC and then you have to charge the, you, you charge the battery directly with DC, right? Uh, or, that, that would be how you would charge any, any high voltage battery. Like okay. That, yeah. Cause you're not like converting it to AC then going through the AC in uh, well, charger and then charging your battery. Like how does Aptera do it? Yeah, so, is it going DC from the solar panel straight to the DC um, yes, it's battery? a lot more complicated than that. Okay. Um, you'd think it would be a simple electrical circuit just to go from one voltage to another. Yeah. It's, a, it's intricate control okay, it's not that. algorithm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's uh, it is DC to DC. Okay. But uh, there's actually quite a lot that goes into that. A lot of okay. safety concerns and, uh -huh. and stuff that uh, the software on my end has to, to monitor for okay. some, some of the hardware. Okay. So, huh. Uh, wow, that. Yeah, I wish I knew more about it so I could <laughs> answer, ask you like intelligent questions about it. Oh, these I, have been great questions. Uh, <laughs> I don't it's, understand. It's get some of our challenges that we face out. So you guys have a you have been doing testing um, on the solar panels. Uh, yes. Uh huh. And uh, like, there's a lot more work to be done on them to figure out these questions that we've talked about, like yeah. the rapidly changing conditions and so how to change it. It's kind of consistent with gamma. Gamma is 80%, uh -huh. uh, around 80% what we're going to produce for production. Uh -huh. um, so that, that kind of transfers to our electrical systems. Of course, there's still lots of testing to do. Uh -huh. We really want to make sure that like, when we put these in owners' hands, there's going to be no problems with them or very few problems. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, there, there's lots of different kinds of testing. The, the panel team has to do all sorts of testing on the panels alone right and then more on the charging side we have to do lots of integration testing with the rest of the systems in the car making sure you know okay once we've locked in our design of when do we want to charge what initiates charging things like that uh, that the systems do behave to that specification uh -huh. um, so yeah those are some of the things that we will have to make sure we have down and working in okay. the future so uh, in the um, question and answer, I think yesterday, mm -hmm. Chris Anthony said that there might there's some thought of putting like an external solar array on it and plugging it in. Do you know anything about that? Um, not really. I can't really talk to that. Okay. Uh, I would he... take, take Chris's word over mine. Okay. Uh, that, so, uh, so I was like yeah. wondering, like, is that a thing or is he just saying like, oh, it might happen and it'd be cool. Yeah, I certainly think it would be cool. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I like, I, yeah. when I first talked to him a while ago, I said, you know, that'd be great because a lot of people would want to like take it camping or something like that. And yeah. it, you could just like put in an array that you carried along. Yeah. That would be nice. Because, you know, some people are trying to do this crazy thing where like they get one of those like solar quote generators, which is like, have you, have you heard of these things? Solar generators? They like the big they're just arrays? A, they're that just a big battery. Okay. And then they have like a solar panel that you can like hook into the battery and the solar panel chan charges the battery mm -hmm. and the battery has a bunch of outlets that for you to like, you know, yeah. run, run electric stuff kind of off like of. Van life. You know, van life, that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like that. And so they were trying to like charge, like someone that, to like try to charge their Tesla with that thing. Yeah. Right? Which is like the most roundabout way possible because you're taking like DC and then con putting that into a battery. Yeah. And the battery takes it an inverter, turns it into AC. And then you put in the AC and then you're plugging it into the J1772 on it. And then that's putting it back to DC. <laughs> yeah. And then going back into that, right? That's so much less efficient than it's like the most that. roundabout exactly. like way of doing it. But people are trying to do that when they take their Teslas camping and stuff. And we're like, with this, if it already has the solar charging hardware and software. Exactly. What, so if you just add more panels to it, right, it should be more efficient. Yeah, in that regard, it, it, that would be a great thing to have because, like, a, a Tesla, you can't open it up and connect directly to the exactly. battery, uh, which would be a more efficient way than going DC, AC, DC. Correct. Um, 
and again, what we do here is DC to DC, which is more efficient than, yeah. than that roundabout way. And so does the car have the overhead to add more solar? Like the charging um, electronics? Or like, speak is it that. maxed out with if you get the full thing? Uh, there's always room for more. Okay. Uh, I know we're always looking for like ways to make this car more efficient and, and generate more solar. But okay. um, speaking to the hardware, can't really give details on that. But, okay. Um, yeah. All right. I think it'd be super cool. Thanks. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Okay. So I wish I knew more about this subject so I could have asked more intelligent questions and gotten uh, some more information out of him because I think he knew a lot and there's a lot to talk about and get into there. I just didn't have the background to ask intelligent questions about this. Um, okay, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Thanks for supporting members. Have a great day, everyone.